Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome back to another video from Project IUC Again we will be discussing the topic of Iman And in this video specifically we will be looking at the 6 pillars of faith or Iman Okay so the first thing that we're going to talk about regarding the pillars of Iman Is the first pillar the belief in Allah now you see, to believe in Allah is to believe that there is only one God worthy of worship. So there's only one God worthy of worship. And this one God has no partners, whether that be a son or anything else so this concept is known as Tawheed now Tawheed linguistically in English translates to the unification or oneness of something it means the unification or oneness of something and this word Tawheed derives from the root Arabic word of Wahada now this word means to unite. So all in all, belief in Allah is to have Tawheed. Now we're going to go ahead and break this word Tawheed down further into three separate categories. So the first category of belief in Allah is to have Tawheed ad rubiyah See, now this word means maintaining maintaining the unity of lordship So Tawheed al-Rububiyyah means to maintain the unity of lordship and it's upholding in beliefs the sovereignty the sovereignty the power and the absolute rule of Allah furthermore Tawheed ad rububiyyah also means having the kinship of Allah of Allah and it being as the one true God one true God over all the creations of the heavens and the earth and Tawheed ad ar is to testify testify and to submit to these qualities and knowing that every single one of these elements belong only to Allah now the next category that we're going to discuss from the three Categories of Tawheed is Tawheed al Asma was Sifat. So Tawheed al Asma was Sifat. And this means maintaining, maintaining the unity of. Allah's names 
and attributes. So Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat means maintaining the unity of Allah's names and attributes. Now one asks, what are these names and attributes? Well, these are the 99 names by which Allah is attributed to. So these, every single one of these 99 names has a specific attribute and each of these attributes has a specific ter has a specific characteristic. For example, one of the names of Allah is Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. Another one is Ar Rahim. Now these words mean the most merciful, exceedingly merciful. So, knowing the characteristics of these words of these names being the most merciful and exceedingly merciful we can attribute them to Allah so with these in mind we know that Allah is the most merciful and the most exceedingly merciful this sums up Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat now the third and last category of Tawheed is Tawheed al-Ibadah and this means maintaining the unity of Allah's worship. So what do I mean by this? Well, this means to display every single one of the physical rituals as dictated in Islamic doctrines attributing and displaying every single one of the physical rituals only and directly to Allah and carrying them out only for the worship of Allah. Of Allah. And this means giving full right of his authority over all things. So this would mean whatever has been prescribed and ordained in Islam, such as the five daily prayers, or the five daily salat, the fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, the hajj, that we perform, the charity and zakat that we give, attributing every single one of these actions and giving full right of every single one of these actions only to Allah. So this, my brothers and sisters, sums up the three categories of Tawheed. The next thing that we're going to look at regarding the six pillars of faith is to have belief in the angels you see the angels are a creation of Allah creation of Allah and this creation is unlike any other and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran they are created from light or Noor in Arabic and these angels were created before humans before human beings and the only purpose of these angels is to worship and obey the commandments the commands of 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, angels are beings which do not sleep, eat, or suffer any form of illness. They are a perfect creation of Allah and it is crucial to believe in these creations. as they keep a record of our deeds. Some of the angel's duties as categorized as specific some of the angel's duties as categorized as specific angels such as Jibrail alayhi salam or Jibril as mentioned in the previous videos alayhi salam have specific jobs and we know that Jibril alayhi salam's job was to convey the message of oneness of Allah to the messengers as such there are different angels such as Israfil who is responsible for the blowing of the trumpet which will signal the start of the day of judgment there are different other angels who are different other specific tasks such as the angel of death the angel of death and this angel is responsible for abstracting the soul when the person dies as such believing in every single one of these angels is a crucial element of islam and it adds another element of belief to the six pillars of Iman. Now moving on, the third category or third pillar of, of Iman is to have belief in the scriptures. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed books to his messengers as a form of guidance and proof for mankind a guidance and a proof for mankind that indeed Allah exists and is the only one true God among these books is of course the magnificent and holy Quran which was revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as we've discussed in the previous videos and Allah has guaranteed guaranteed the protection the protection of the Quran from any distortion distortion or corruption the books that were sent and known to man or the different books that were sent and known to the prophets are as first one being the scrolls or in Arabic the suhuf 
which was sent to our beloved Prophet Ibrahim السلام, the second one being the song and this was revealed to which was revealed as the Zubur to Prophet David or Dawood alayhi salam the third book being the Torah or the Torah which was sent to Prophet Moses or Musa peace be upon him the fourth one being the gospel or the Injil which was sent to the Prophet Jesus or Isa peace be upon him and of course the final book and the seal of all books of all scriptures from God being the beautiful and magnificent holy Quran, which was sent to our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him now these are the scriptures and to have firm belief in every single one of these is an essential is an essential element in believing pillars of faith Muslims believe in all of these books and believe that every single one of them were revealed to the messengers peace be upon them however as Muslims we only follow the Holy Quran as the other books the wordings were lost to history and to man. The Quran, as it's the final revelation, is preserved in a way that no other book is preserved. That is why it aims to implement the rulings of God into our daily lives. As instructed from Allah and our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Furthermore, Muslims are ordained to give this sacred and holy book sacred and holy book the respect that it deserves Muslims believe that the Quran is again the direct speech of God Revealing what he wants for humanity and then transmitting that message directly to the mighty angel 
Jibril, peace be upon him. And then that message being translated and transmitted to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the essential message of the Quran and how it directly comes straight from God. With that being said, our fourth category of faith is to have belief or belief in the messenger. Muslims have to believe in every single prophet, every prophet that has been sent down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And following their shared message, <coughs> excuse me, their shared message of strict monotheistic, theistic, the strict monotheistic principle. of there being no God but Allah. This is the shared and essential message that every single one of the messengers were sent down to give to humanity. Whether that be again, Jesus peace be upon him, Abraham, Muhammad peace be upon him, or any other mes messenger. Now, there were many prophets that were sent down to reveal this message. And again, the five most important messengers and the most mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Nuh alayhi salam, or Noah, Moses alayhi salam, or Musa, Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus, peace be upon him, Ibrahim alayhi salam, or Abraham, and then the seal of the prophets and the last prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to humanity, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace be upon him. You see, most of these messen most of the messengers of Allah were sent to specific nations. So each one of these prophets had a specific nation or people that they were sent to but muhammad peace be upon him was a messenger to the whole of humanity his nation would exceed and pass the boundaries of space and time and he would be the seal of the prophets and sent to the entirety of the people and it is the duty of Muslims to send salams peace be upon them of Allah when mentioning the names of any of these prophets so this sums up having the faith and belief in the messengers as being one of the pillars of Islam now the second last pillar or the fifth pillar of Iman is to believe in the afterlife. <clears throat> Muslims must believe in the existence existence of an afterlife. 
And in this afterlife, we have to believe that every single one of our deeds, an atom's weight worth of any good deed or bad deed that we do, will be accounted for and we will be questioned in the court of Allah on the day of judgment. So no matter how big or how small this deed is, it will be accounted for. No one knows when this day will arise except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the day of judgment will come upon a time when no person has any knowledge of when its arrival will come. And thus, we must continuously work hard to achieve the best in every single one of our good deeds and make sure to repent for our bad deeds. Furthermore, Muslims also have to believe in the existence of heaven or hell and of these two being the final abode or final destination of every single human being that has ever walked, walked the earth as such these aspects either going to the eternal bliss and beauty of heaven or the eternal torment and torture of hell is dictated from our deeds whether we do good deeds or bad deeds will dictate where our final destination will be okay and to sum up the belief in the afterlife here is a quick verse from the beautiful and glorious Quran which dictates the importance and belief of the hereafter or the afterlife and it goes as we place the scales of justice for the day of resurrection so no soul will be treated unjustly at all if there is even the weight of a mustard seed we will bring it forth meaning in good deed or in bad deed and sufficient are we as accountant now this court this verse sums up the essential message of the afterlife now with that being said we're going to move on to our last pillar of faith or iman and this is the belief in qadr or divine creed now this is one of the most complex this is one of the more complex topics in the pillars of iman and inshallah we will have a separate video dictating all the details and specific and the specifics of this topic for now the qadr of allah is as being the decree of allah and this means that everything that happens in the world or happens to a person happens for a reason and it's all due to the plan and decree of Allah. Muslims also understand that they are given free will. Free will. And have the ability to distinguish between what is good and what is evil the belief in the divine predestination includes the belief in four essential elements these four essential elements are first knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone has created everything 
every star, every solar system, every plant, tree is due to the creation of Allah. The second aspect in believing the divine predestination is Allah alone knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ultimate knowledge over the past, present, and future. And he knows and has planned out every single element in your life. Not only that, but the absolute knowledge of Allah extends beyond our choices. An example that I can give is that if there was a choice to distinguish between choice A and choice B, Allah not only knows what choice you'll make, but he also knows if you did make the other choice, what will be the series of events that will unfold throughout your life. So, Allah has knowledge of what choice you will make, but if you were not to make it and make the other choice, he knows everything that will happen and everything that would be different in your life this is the absolute absolute knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses now the third thing in accordance to predestination is that there is a record of everything that has happened and will happen whether that be again in the past, present, and future. So every single thing, choice, thought, action, and scenario that has happened, it is all recorded. And again, it is all with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing that has the, uh, the last thing that dictates the divine predestination is whatever Allah has decreed has decreed will occur. And whatever Allah has not decreed decreed will not occur. This is the qadr of Allah and essentially the key elements that dictate the divine decree of Allah. Now a quick example that the scholars of Islam use to determine and mention what the decree of Allah is. They say it is like a straight line and this straight line is what Allah has decreed and is the plan of Allah. Whether the people symbolized as these dots know of it or not. Whatever Allah has decreed, that will be the outcome of every single action, every single scenario in the world. So again, my brothers and sisters, this sums up the six pillars of faith or Iman. And thank you all so much for tuning in for another video. This has been Project IUC. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.